It's Beerus TV Refact Wednesday, and today we answer one of those newer reefer questions. What's a protein skimmer, and how does it work to make your saltwater aquarium more successful and easier to maintain? That's coming up. Hey, I'm Ryan with Beerus TV Refacts, where every week we do our best to help you guys enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby with quick, straight to the point answers to your questions. Today is all about those initial reef tank equipment questions, today specific to a protein skimmer. I think we all want to know what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I'm going to start by saying this isn't the most popular position in every reefing circle, but I'm going to say right now that a skimmer is not a requirement for success, just an optional but beneficial filter. Now, Spirit, I can confidently say at the end of the next few minutes, you're going to have a very clear picture of what a skimmer does, how it works, and a very solid vision into the decision of if you want to incorporate a skimmer into your current tank build or add one to an existing setup. We'll get to exactly how a skimmer functions in just a moment, but at the heart of it, a protein skimmer is just a container of air, bubbles, and water that perform a handful of valuable functions in an aquarium. That frothy mix of air and water can actually filter the water and permanently remove broken down uneaten foods, fish waste, suspended particulates, and undesirable color pigments that can yellow the water. Effectively, what goes into the tank and forms of food also needs to come out in one way or another, or it'll just build up as pollutants in the tank. This is particularly true in a newer tank. So all the waste removed by the skimmer results in a reduced reliance on manual water changes, but also reduced reliance on other forms of filtration that when combined together, what most reefers consider a valuable component of a network of filtration redundancy, where if one thing fails or loses performance, the others pick up the slack. Redundancy is a theme that you're gonna hear a lot as you explore reefing over the years. There's one other major function that a protein skimmer performs on a saltwater tank, and that's gas exchange. Meaning as the fish consume the available oxygen in the water, it needs to be replenished. The fish also release carbon dioxide into the water that needs to be released into the surrounding air as well. Most common tank designs will promote proper gas exchange with just some water flow and the surface of the tank water turning over, but a skimmer is redundant and again supportive to that process. In fact, a good skimmer likely has 10, if not 100 times as much surface area and gas exchange as the tank itself, making it even better as a high performing option. The obvious next question is, how does a protein skimmer do all that with just some air and bubbles? And one of the things you will likely learn in this hobby pretty quickly is being told what to do provides a reliable path to a solid reef tank but understanding how or why it works produces an entirely different type of evolutionary success. Starting with how does the skimmer remove excess food and fish waste from the system? Well, almost all of you have seen this in action at one time in your life or another. Most of you have seen it in that foam that collects on the shoreline of your favorite lake or ocean beach. That's just the results of the waves crashing, mixing air and water and dissolved organics and decaying material in the water to produce a foam. The wave action eventually depositing the foam in the waste that it holds on the beach. Same things happening in a protein skimmer. Rather than waves, we use a pump to mix the air and water and create a foam. Then rather than collecting it on the beach, we collect it in a cup. When it's full every week or two, we just simply empty it into the drain, effectively removing much of the fish waste and uneaten food from the tank. So why does this work so in some very brief but technical terms? Well, much of the undesirable waste in the tank has an electrical charge, which causes it to be naturally attracted to the surface of the water, in this case, an air bubble. Those pollutants which are attracted to the bubble are called hydrophilic, meaning they're attracted to water. So the waste natural charge just allows it to form on a bubble, create the desirable foam head, and effectively leave the tank by collecting in our cups. They'll also note that there are some hydrophobic contaminants which repel water and just shuts foam production down. The most common example of that is oils from your hands or some foods where directly after feeding or putting your hands in the tank, the skimmer just shuts down foam production for a few hours. Not much you can do about that, but it is worth noting that the skimmer doesn't remove every pollutant, just many of them and some contaminants may slow down production. I will say that it's likely that running a good bag or reactor of activated carbon in the tank may absorb some of those oils faster and get the skimmer back to normal quicker. So the big question again is, do you need a skimmer to be successful? And again, the answer is no, but there are a slew of benefits and most people will end up with a skimmer at some point because of those benefits. We actually put together a pretty cool skimmer playlist with a bunch of videos starting with more direct details on which type of tanks benefit the most from skimmers and which don't need them because there are tanks like this one, which I'd call awesome, that intentionally do not have one. 
This playlist is going to have everything skimmers as we release them over time, including tuning tips, troubleshooting, sizing, even best of class info. If you want to know more about skimmers and reef tanks in general, hit that subscribe notification bell and then hit the skimmer playlist to dive in. See you next Wednesday with the next batch of BRS TV Reef Facts.